Well, good morning, everyone. It's so good of you to, those of you here, to come out on a, this cold January morning. And those uh, on Zoom are enjoying this, sitting by your warm fireplace. <laughs> or even those who come on later and look at this in our archives. We're just glad to be with you another day of reflection and introspection. I'm Dave Bianchi, and I'm serving as your worship associate today, and I'm really looking forward to this service. So if you're new to us, know that we are a welcoming community and that we care deeply for all people, regardless of racial identity, age, economic circumstances, immigration status, sexual orientation, or gender identity. Our mission is to grow together in love, faith, justice, and joy. Note that there will be no formal offertory today, so those of us at the fellowship can simply leave your contribution or pledge in whatever amount you feel called to give in the containers in the front and the back following the service. So both those on Zoom and those of us here, of course, can text 73256 and put UUFNN in the message box and hit send. It's pretty simple. Of course, you can also mail a check to our office at 780 Del Monte Lane, Reno 89511. And each month we share our offerings with a great nonprofit that shares our values. And this month, we have selected CASA, the court-appointed special advocates, who serve Washoe County youth with the, within the foster care system. The judge determines the necessity of a CASA and appoints one in critical cases. CASA offers the judge the critical information needed to ensure that each child's rights and needs are being attended to. CASA serves about 165 children with about 95 volunteers. The goal of the CASA Foundation is to recruit and train advocates to serve every child in foster care. The CASA Volunteer Advocates for those most abused and neglected children, investigating, mentoring, and advocating for them. Often the CASA Volunteer remains the only constant adult presence in the child's life. Washoe County foster system is overburdened. Statistics show that children with a CASA are more successful in school and more likely to become more productive citizens. Our donations will help to offset the ongoing cost of recruiting and training volunteers. So we thank you for your generosity now, for those of us here at the fellowship, uh, please follow the latest pro protocols by outline uh, by our board, including proper spacing, no hugging, handshaking, maybe an elbow bump, wear your mask. Hopefully, we all know this drill by now. And those of you on Zoom will remain muted during the service, but you can put your comments in the chat box. And you can also stay following the service for coffee time. So no matter where you are today, sit back, enjoy, and thank you for being with us. The new year is often a time for making resolutions, or as I call it, every Monday morning. <laughs> resolutions are mostly a result of reflecting 
on our past in a punitive manner, concentrating on our mistakes, beating ourselves up for our human frailties, reacting impulsively to what we disdain as mortal weakness in our lives, rather than playing to our innate and blessed strengths. What if we could simply resolve every day to become aware of and accept our past in order to peacefully, kindly adjust our future with just one action, one step, one tiny nudge forward, demonstrating the universe's divine forgiveness. Sally Barker sings a song that I think reclaims our power to move forward, not in spite of, but because of our humanness. It starts like this. The beginning is now and will always be. You say you lost your chance. Fate brought you defeat, but that means nothing. Don't look so sad. You've been listening to those who say you've missed your chance. There's another train. There always is. Maybe the next one is yours. Get up and climb aboard. I invite you to engage in our service today, reflecting back with self-acceptance, to be present and aware, and to imagine that there is always another train. Well, we invite those of you at home to have your your chalices ready if you have one. And I would like to invite uh, the uh, beautiful and wonderful, my bride, Lois Bianchi, <laughs> up to light the chalice as I read these words from Deborah Falk. A chalice lit in the midst is a symbol of our liberal faith a faith built on the foundation of freedom, reason, and welcome, a faith sustained by acts of kindness and justice, a faith that envisions a world flourishing with equality for all people, a faith that demands the living out of goodness, a faith that requires thoughtfulness, a faith of wholeness. This tiny flame is the symbol of the spark of all this within each of us. Come sing a song with me. Come sing a song with me. Come sing a song with me that I and 
Well, as it turns out, I, back at the end of 2020, I gave a year of the, end of the year reflection about my impressions of that year. I started out by quoting Charles Dickens where he had written, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, it was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness, it was the epic of belief, it was the epic of incredulity, it was the season of light, it was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. Those words were written in 1859. Now, despite the rumors, I wasn't around then I, <laughs> to know the full impact of those words on those times, but he could have written those words today talking about 2020 and again in 2021. You know, we, we entered 2021 with a lot of optimism. Well, at least I did. I mean, the vaccine was coming. It was going to be available to the masses, and we could get two shots and know that if a high percentage of the population was vaccinated, that this, this COVID thing would be defeated. By June, we were ready to take off our masks, jump in a car, and start traveling. And we did. That we took a trip to the Northwest and over to Idaho, Montana, Colorado, and Utah. But along the way, we started hearing that not enough folks had gotten vaccinated and that a new strain of the virus called the Delta variants was be making headway. So by the end of our trip, we were masking again. But we kept meeting folks in Idaho who didn't believe all this COVID stuff. In fact, we visited a close relative who didn't believe in getting vaccinated. On top of that, we had to contend with smoky air throughout parts of Washington, Idaho, and Montana. And, and then we returned to our beloved community of Reno where the smoke was even much, much worse. Huge fires had broken out north and south of us and destroyed a couple of towns, causing havoc all around, even threatening our beautiful Lake Tahoe. You know, we think this only happens in the summer, but just two days ago, a huge fire broke out close to where our daughter lives and works in Boulder County, Colorado. Our crazy weather patterns keep getting more severe and frequent. Climate change most certainly has played a role. Immigration and refugees continue to be in our international, national, and local news, and the latest involves Afghani refugees who need assistance. You know, our immigration system and laws are so outdated and they need compassionate common sense and economic reform. Current laws and regulations are discriminatory and racist. And then, and then there's January 6th last year, when a bunch of yahoos, led by their chief yahoo, decided it was a good idea to overturn the election and invade the capital of the United States, causing significant damage, loss of life, and a major hit on our democracy. Now, when I wrote this down, I thought, am I using the word Yahoo correctly? <laughs> so, so I Googled it, and I said, it said, a rude, noisy, or violent person. So, so yes, yes, I did. The cost of living continues to rise, especially in the housing arena, making it all that much more difficult for folks on the edge or below poverty or even some in the middle class who can't have access to affordable housing continues to be a huge problem. Okay, I'm going to quit focusing on the bad news. So here's some good news. These are kind of a random order. 
We have a new president. There's a, there's a new homeless center in Reno, now operated by the county. The, the, but the Reno Posse continues to feed those that, for whatever reason, choose not to be there. The balloon races, the air races, uh, Art Town, Hot August Nights, the Rib Cook-Off, Cook-Off all returned. Our children returned to the classroom with strict protocols. Coo Stevens, a, a Native American high school cross-country track star from Yarrington, ran 50 miles from the Stewart Indian School site back to Mason Valley to commemorate his great grandfathers continued escapes from captors who were trying to take him away from his family and his traditions. Simone Biles, the phenomenal Olympic champion, brought mental health to the forefront by her courageous act during the Olympics in Japan and other athletes have followed her example. Two Minneapolis, excuse me, the Minneapolis policeman that murdered George Floyd was found guilty. A few other guilty decisions have come down that make us realize that justice can be done. So speaking of good news, let's talk about our fellowship, new UFNN. 2021 saw us come back physically together now, it's been a slow, cautious approach as we started in late summer, meeting behind the religious education building and then transitioning from outside to inside to where we've set up multiple platform arrangements so that we can be together online over Zoom or, or here in person, safely distanced, wearing masks. Now, I'm looking forward to the day when we all start to sing together and give each other hugs. But we're not there yet. Our professional staff, Reverend Karen and Kristen and our board have been very thorough in their deliberations about keeping us all safe, and I appreciate that. We continue to take on social justice issues with our continued focus on climate change and how we can take action and make a difference. We've been still feeding the unhoused in our community, systemic racial justice issues, helping our refugees, and continued focus on borderland justice. And Lois and I have participated in a couple of discussion groups studying and discussing books about the realities and the continued fight against racism both overt and covert. So you can see that we have not stood still. In fact, our membership numbers continue to hold. Our finances are in great shape as we enter the new calendar year. And we continue to care for one another, for those with illnesses, loss of family members and friends, and the loss of some of our beloved members. So we know that we're not alone. We're not alone in our concerns, our troubles, our heartbreak, and our sadness, but also our good news and accomplishments. Well, I know I'm supposed to be talking about 2021, but I, I have to mention here in 2022, uh, two 50th anniversaries that are happening this month. So CMR is back here. Her and her David will be married for 50 years this month. And Bill and Beth Isaiah are celebrating 50 years of membership with the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Northern Nevada. Now, they couldn't be here today, but I hope that sometime in the near future we can hear from them about their 50 years of change and growth within our fellowship and how it has affected their lives. So Reverend Karen and Kristen have continued to guide us through these troubled times with wisdom 
and grace. Our board has been very responsible and deliberative in their decision process. Our musical folks, led by the multi-talented Bill Quinby, has provided us with much joy and sense. <laughs> and they've shown us all is right with the world. Our technical volunteers, led by Philip Moore in the back, have given us an opportunity to all stay connected and improve the quality of the services immensely. So I just wanted to say thank you. And I, speaking of thank yous, I want to give a shout out to the people I work with on a continued basis, the worship associate team, old timers like Bob Alto sitting here and, <laughs> and Carrie DeBarger, who's only 17, is an old timer. And then, then we had a couple of people join us during the COVID time. J.J. Lee, who's here today, and, and, uh, and Bill Miller. <laughs> you know, we, we threw them in, into this fire without much opportunity for training, and they've responded with wit and flexibility. And uh, is it okay, CMR? She just told me she wants to rejoin the Worship Associates beginning next month. So a big thank you to all of them. It's been, it's been quite a year. I'm looking forward to seeing what JJ has to say about the future. So let's hope, let's hope that I don't have to come back here next year <laughs> and keep repeating the year-end message of it's the best of times, it's the worst of times. So may it be. And amen. A ritual just to get everything on and off. So sorry. Or again, every Monday morning. I invite us now to set our hearts, minds, bodies, and spirits to our time of community prayer and meditation. We know so well the truth of Sally Barker's words when she says, we crawl into the dark sometimes, we think too much, then we fill our heads with crazy things that only break our hearts, but I know you've seen what the earth can do when it's dragging down another load of us worrisome fools. We seek the divine today to express gratitude for the recognition an acceptance of our humanness, for our myriad opportunities for continued learning and growth, for a community that together can acknowledge and hold our joys and sorrows, 
our obstacles and our victories, our worries, and our peace. I invite those of you at home to record these in the chat box so that we can hold them as one community together. We ask the divine to help us remember there's another train. There always is. Maybe the next one is yours. Get up and climb aboard another train. We are one community held together through attention, intention, immediacy, and charity. So we make our gesture to ourselves and each other, one hand on our heart, the other extended outward in a silent expression to say, I see you, I hear you. We stand on the platform together. Amen. Gathered here in the mystery of the hour, gathered here in one strong body, gathered here in the struggle and the power, spirit drawn gathered here in the mystery of the hour, gathered here in one strong body, gathered here in the struggle and the power, spirit drawn Dave has given us a great look in the rear view mirror, so to speak, a review of 2021, the good, the bad, the ugly, again, every Monday morning for me. My job is to gaze through a crystal ball and imagine a 2022 for our fellowship. But there is something else that is important for us not to miss, and I want to enlarge on it, the present. Think of the present as a transition between past to future. It's a pivotal moment that can often go fairly unrecognized, unnoticed, entirely missed. 
Transitions are in-betweens, in between past and present, in between the great room and religious education, in, be in between born and dead. As you can see, in between or a transition can be a pretty important space to look at. Let's use the concept of mindfulness to recognize the transition or present time. John Cabot Zinn, the American bonus pater familias or good family father of modern mindfulness, defines it as awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose in the present moment non judgmentally. Being mindful, then, we are attentive, intentional, immediate, and charitable. These are not only lofty goals in themselves, but actually actionable items. So what might I do that would cause someone else to know that I am being attentive? I might cast my eyes upon another who is in dire straits and make a step, small, medium, or large, towards shrinking their desperation, maybe financially, perhaps by doing some chore for them, possibly making and delivering a meal, so many ways to demonstrate attending. What might I do to demonstrate intention? Possibly brainstorm objectives with someone, schedule my goal in a calendar, get others to join my project. These are just some ideas. What is immediacy about? It's about focus, exclusion of distraction, not thinking about the past or the future, only what's currently on the front burner, here, now. Charitability, Latin, love. There are many ways to show love. Say the words, give a hug. I know, I know, not always a reasonable thing to do in these times. Provide a service, add energy. Now this could also be financial service or monetary energy, for example. So I would invite us to use the lens of mindfulness, mindfulness, attention, intentionality, immediacy, charitability, to attract us to taking action to create our future rather than waiting on the future. I asked chairperson of the board, Chris Hyland, to talk with me about some of the board's goals for next year. He shared about the continuing need to balance between the forces of the pandemic and the desires of many, if not most, in our community to go back to business as usual, pre-2020, before there was a pandemic, and we could meet safely together in the great room without giving it the slightest thought. Philip Moore and his steadfast tech team have been working relentlessly to keep our Sunday and special services available to all members, allowing folks to stay home and remain a part of the congregation or to come in and be a part of the congregation. This small band of technical wizards has never let the congregation down and they continually seek ways to broaden our scope and provide new and exciting ways for us to be together while sitting apart. These accomplishments didn't just happen magically or because we waited to be plugged in by some mysterious forces. No, this was mindfulness in action, attention, intention, immediacy, charitability. Philip saw a gaping void or a marvelous opportunity and took steps. He got together with leadership and brainstormed the possibilities. He brought volunteers in to join together in the project. 
He did not hang on to the past or listen to naysayers. He seized the moment. Volunteers lovingly gift their time week after week to make a communal service, well, communal and possible in impossible times. And yes, we had to throw money, not just a little bit, at this project to make it work as seamlessly and congenially as it does. Now, I invite us, members and attendees, to step up and relieve some of our weary technical troops, all volunteers, who have been at this for almost two years, merciless years, to take a turn at the mixing board. And young people, you know who you are. You can be a tremendous help to us older fogies because you grew up on this tech stuff. While some of us still can't use the remote control. Uh. How do you do that double thumb thing? If you can't see the need, allow my eyes to see it for you and take a leap of faith. Do as Philip did and seize the moment. Second on the board's docket, the board is implementing a new process to enhance greater communication between those who attend or are members here and the board itself. The board wants to provide information about their response to the pandemic, create a dialogue about activities of the board and committees, create and maintain a document library, and initiate an after-service member forum to give feedback to the board. They heard the need, they looked at the options, and once again, they acted. Now it's up to us to step up and make our voices heard. All any of us has to do is say what we see. If you're able to confab around solutions, great. But the ask is that you just take a small step. Communicate with the board at these forums. Last and certainly not least, our social justice efforts. The board would like to begin funding work groups in order to enhance effectiveness and increase outreach. Our social activists are paying attention responding purposefully and with little thought to their own wallets, hurtling themselves head on at ideas that make a difference. Now here is an area where you don't have to lift a finger, flip a digital switch or speak out. As the saying goes, no applause, just throw money. I shared a few lines from Sally Barker's Another Train already in our worship. I think the next stanza is apropos here. You feel you're done. There's no such thing. Although you're standing on your own, your own breath is king. The beginning is now. Don't turn around. Regrets of bad mistakes will only drain you. There's another train. There always is. Maybe the next one is yours. Get up and climb aboard another train. So here is my imaginative, full throttle look into the crystal ball. I see dozens of you offering your willingness to learn and grow on the tech team. In fact, I see you fighting over opportunities to host a service, electronically usher, shine the lights, pump up the volume by serving on the tech team. That's what I see. That's what I see. I see it. And there's a bunch of you over here, I think, those of you who have insight, maybe a grasp of systems theory, or just like to share your opinion, I see you yakking it up with board members. 
yakking it up with a mask, yakking it up. And then I see maybe in some other direction, here's some folks who love to write. I see you drafting checks payable to UUFNN and slipping them into one of the offering receptacles or texting the gift to 73256. You don't think I can see the future? Well, if I haven't been, let me be clear now. The best way to predict the future, Abraham Lincoln said, is to create it. Let's create it together. This wasn't in my script, but I, I just, I thanked a lot of people, but I just have to say thank you to uh, Mary Lee on the piano and Rosie for that voice that she lends with Bill. I will. It's amazing the talent we have in this fellowship. So, well, thank you. Again, for joining us, and just a couple of announcements. Uh, if, if anybody out there wants to know what we're doing, just keep watching your emails. Even if there's an occasional miscommunication about being only on Zoom today. And if you'd like to receive our emails and you're just listening in, uh, there's a, a way to do that online as well. And feel free to share our link with those that are feeling isolated or may need connection. For those on uh, Zoom, you can stay for coffee time. It will start right after this uh, to join in some small group conversations. And so now, 
Let's sing and listen together to for all that is our life. For all that is our life, we sing our thanks and praise. For all life is a gift, which we are called to use to build the common goal and make our own days glad. For needs we serve, for services we give, for work and its rewards, for hours of rest and love, Come with praise and thanks for all that is our life. For sorrows we must bear, for failures, pains, and loss, for each new thing we learn, for fearful hours that We truly are spirits already inhabiting these human bodies. We empower our spirits by doing what only humans can do. We use our hands and feet and mouths and talents to realize, to make real through action that which needs to be done. We gather all of our spirits and hands and feet and mouths and talents together and from that place we change the world by changing our community, our neighborhood, our great room, one by one, together. May we learn from our past for the benefit of this moment and the future. May we be both comforted and challenged. And may we know that we are up to the task now and forever. Amen, salam, shalom, namaste.